so you really are. Ah, doing the Dragonborn's work. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Large Slamentation. I know it's been a bit, so let's go ahead and get into it. Today, we are journeying back to Skyrim to discuss, well, the career opportunities that are ahead of you. You see, a Dragonborn may be powerful, but he's got to be able to, you know, polish up his skills. You know, earn a living. He can't just shout his way to victory all the time, there's a recharge rate, so he start, has to start diversifying with how he spends his time. Luckily for you, I'm here to help you out. And so, welcome to this episode of not only Lark's Limitations, but Lark's Recruitment Service, as we align you with the right guild and job to get you through. You know why? Because when I need a job done, I get someone with a job to do that job! Let's go through Tamriel, or specifically Skyrim, and figure out which guild is right for you. Let's get into it. All right, so starting off, let's say you're feeling like you want to be a little bit more eloquent, a little more, how might one say, verbose? You want to talk your way out of issues. Well, you picked the wrong game because the only thing we have available for you is the Bard's College. And, well, what can we say about the Bard's College? They are worthless and weak, and those are their good points. They barely have any quests, and they don't really teach you anything. Sad, considering how much of a meme bards have become in games like D&D or Pathfinder. Honestly, with a little bit of more forethought, they could have made something more about them. Like, heck, look at Baldur's Gate 3. Playing a bard there is a blast. But... Here, unless you have some very extensive mods, being a bard isn't that fun. But regardless of mods or not, the Bard's College is still going to be very much boring. So, question is, since you're probably not going to want to join them, what would we have to fix and to make them worth joining? Well, I think they could be saved. What we need to do to make the Bard's College worth enrolling in is simply add some more diplomatic kind of quest lines. Imagine being able to fix or cause problems in Skyrim, not by swinging your sword or casting spell or being a dagger in the dark, but rather being politically savvy. If you could solve your problems via politicking, like being a, Nor a Nordic Bismarck, well, actually he's kind of already Nordic if you want to think about it. But regardless, imagine settling your problems like Bismarck rather than settling them like some warrior king. Actually, I'm talking myself out of this right now. But anyway, Bard's College, allow yourself to be, you know, useful. That's what I'm trying to say. Be useful. Basically, be better. Do something. Anything. <gasps> Five minutes. Could you not be yourself for five minutes? Anyway, let's actually talk about some of the real guilds. One of the staples of Elder Scrolls is the blades. Now, as a dragonborn yourself, the blades are going to be very tempting because, well, they're literally designed to help you. But there's some caveats. Let's explore our favorite Akaviri boys. Or maybe not so favorites, because some of you have a big beef with them and we're going to get into that. So these guys, all the Blades, are a unique faction that's supposed to serve you and was organized to serve you and yet re will refuse to do what you say if you don't want to kill your allies. Okay, so let's break it down from the very beginning because they're worth breaking down. The Blades can trace their origins to the end of the first era when the Akaviri invaded. These samurai snake people crashed into Tamriel only to find Raymond Cyrodiil and figure out he was Dragonborn. When they found out, they folded immediately because, well, they're into that kind of thing. Alright, I am the Messiah! <laughs> Ever since then, the Blades have been the Emperor's protectors as they are meant to serve the Dragonborn Emperor, or rather just any Dragonborn. So when the Septim Dynasty died out, they stopped acting as the Emperor's eyes and ears, waiting on a new Dragonborn, because the next dynasty, the Mead Dynasty, didn't have any dragon blood. Sorry, bud. In the meantime, they've decided that they should continue to fight 
but not directly under Imperial eyes. They would fight the Thalmor in the shadows before and during the Great War. And, not gonna lie, they did okay. They're still pretty good combatants, after all. But after the Great Wars ended, one of the stipulations of the White Gold Concordant was that the blades be disbanded. And so most of them went their own way if they weren't already killed. But, in the events of Skyrim, Delphine and Esbern reformed the blades to serve you as they have discovered you are the Dragonborn. So they want to bring back their old purpose of being dragon hunters. And I think this is actually kind of cool. Sort of have a samurai aesthetic as well, which harkens back to their history as Akaviri Dragon Guard, which actually, you know, includes some history to the other continent on Nerd, Akavir, which I think is really cool. And you also have some companions that you can have join. They also, as stated before, are very anti-Thalmor, which is always a plus. But of course, they do have one big problem. They want you to kill Parthenax. He deserves to die. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing? What did you I'm say sorry. to me? I'm so now, for those of you who don't know, Parthenax is a bro, and I may be willing to kill my own sovereign because a guy in a dark cave told me to, but I'm not willing to kill a bro. So, how do we make the blades wake up? Well, believe it or not, it's so simple, someone's already mod made a mod for it, and it's a very popular one, some of you might have even heard about it. Basically, it's just a mod to go around the Parthenax dilemma. You basically force Esbern and Delphine and wake up to remember, I'm the Dragonborn. So when they start talking smack to you, you can remind them, hey, uh, your whole organization and purpose in life is to serve me. So by saying you won't follow me, you are denying your own purpose. Your purpose is not to kill Parthenax, your purpose is to serve the Dragonborn. And the Dragonborn says, Parthenax gets to live. So if you don't like that, get in the back. Well, I'm sorry, but we would dishonor our oaths as blades if we continue to help you. Aren't we forgetting one teensy weensy but ever so crucial little tiny detail? I own you! I take issue with the fact that you're not allowed to have that determining factor. It's weird that so many other guilds and such will allow you to actually take control, and so theoretically you can do with, a, with that guild whatever the heck you want, but the one that is designed to cater to you specifically because you are what you are, they won't let you spare one life, even though it's totally a good reason. But anyway, relatively easy fix for the blades. Just gotta smack some sense into Delphine. Other than that, we're doing pretty good. So let's move on. Now the College of Winterhold is just that, a college. You go there to learn magic. And just like a real college, you pay for your own education. I'm not kidding, you literally pay for each and every single spell. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. Though if you're lucky, you can wind up cheesing two spells out of them for free. But after that, you're gonna be going deep into debt. Seriously, if you wanna go full on Masked Wizard, you better have a relationship with a Thieves Guild or some other line of credit because you're going to be losing a lot of money. But, aside from the, aside from the expense, how are they as a faction? They're okay. I gave it a 5 out of 10. It was okay with you. They really don't provide the repeat missions that other main guilds do, but the main mission is pretty fun, as you untap arcane powers to kill off a Thalmor jackass. Let's break down the story a little bit. It, I won't go too into detail, but I'll get the broad strokes. You start out as a new student, and after one lesson, yes, one lesson, you go on a field trip to Sarthal, the first Atmoran settlement in Tamarian. While there, you find the Eye of Magnus. So that's where that's been. <laughs> Anyway, the eye is super powerful and arcane, as you would expect, and the college decides it needs to bring it back to study. While this is going on, the Sigic Order pops up for some exposition a few times and then dips. Meanwhile, Arcano, the Thalmor ambassador, oh, I'm sorry, I misspelled a uh, spy in my notes. Arcano is trying to figure out what the hell the eye is and how can he can exploit it. Well, after you run and grab some lost books and talk to an old student, you find the Staff of Magnus. You leave Look, I'm not trying to steal your stuff, dude. Anyway, you go to the labyrinth, swipe the staff, come back, and you kill Arcano. Know. But the Archmage and his assistants come down with a bad case of death. So the, they decide you kind of saved our bacon, so it only makes sense for you to be Archmage, which can be pretty funny if you're if you have a melee build. So 
how is the guild and why join it when you can technically learn spells from any court wizard by coughing up the change? Well, in order to access master level spells in each school of magic, you will need a teacher of that respective school and the college has them. And some of these spells are worth it, even some of the ones that aren't modded, particularly looking at you, Destruction School. <laughs> That being said, there are some issues. There are very few students, including you, there's only four at the beginning. And basically there's more faculty than there are actual students. If this was the Mages Guild, that wouldn't be an issue because it's a guild, not necessarily a paid place for learning, but this is specifically a place of education. I know that the games couldn't handle shutting too many people in one location, but come on. Also, canonically, you can take one class with the college. They have a more figure-it-out-yourself mentality. It also doesn't help that vanilla Skyrim spells uh, leveling it can be a bit of a pain. I should also bring up safety concerns. Listen, I'm a teacher IRL, and I've seen kids get hurt in school, and the faculty administration take it very seriously because situations like that can lead to not only medical issues, but legal issues. But according to the previous Archmage, they're not terribly concerned because incinerating uh, uh, students incinerating themselves is kind of the norm. Now I get it, you have a restoration master on staff, but still, maybe a few safety protocols would be appreciated. So what should we do to fix the college? Well, one, I would actually have the school be able to teach some more classes. I think it would be cool if instead of just like every other trainer in this game, the college actually had you bump up your skills by doing something that is the equivalent to a class. Like imagine if you went up to the destruction master and instead of just saying, hey, here's money, you pay me, you teach me how to boom boom real good. She says, okay, we're gonna do some practice now. And as a result of doing that practice, you get like automatically like five levels in destruction. Something, so that would really help you pick things up. Not to mention, speaking of becoming a master mage, let's talk about that. A lot of people have, as previously mentioned, joke that you can become the head of the, the College of Winterhold, the College of Magics, even if you're a full on barbarian two-handed build with the only spell you being no, like flames and uh, healing. What it, I think they should sort of do what they do with so maybe another guild we'll talk about later, and that and if you want to become the Archmage or be officially recognized, you have to master a certain level of magic. Like they say, like before you can do this, you have to be a master in one area of magic and journeyman in the rest or something along those lines. That way it makes a little bit more sense why they're doing it. They might say, hey, we've reserved this spot for you, but you have to finish your education first. I think that would be make more sense and be a little bit more lore friendly than just saying, Hey, you random dude who's been at the college for a collective, what, three weeks? You're in charge now. It would make things flow a little bit nicer. Also, I would uh, like you to fire this chick. Now, as Archmage, I definitely will be able to do that, but all she do, she does is whine. And as a side note, as my next act as Archmage, assuming these previous changes have been implemented, I would like to see the teachers oversee more of the hum of uh, the students' experiments. You know, just for safety reasons. I know Tolftier probably already technically does this, like in lore or something, but having that expand out would be good. And let's go on a recruitment drive to get some more people to come into the college. I mean, winter holds barren as it is. We could probably afford to have a few more people up. But that's just one educator's opinion on how to fix the college. Of Winterhold. We have other options if you're not the studious type. Let's say you like being that barbarian that swings that, that axe around. Let's say you pick fighter every single time you play D&D. No sh judgment. I respect that. Fighter's a fun class and don't let anybody tell you different. But thankfully, we have the guild and companions for you. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about the companions next. the Companions. One of my favorites. These guys are the equivalent of Cyrodiil's Fighters Guild. They are the most famous and honorable mercenaries in Skyrim, and they have been around for literally thousands of years. I'm not kidding. They were started by Ysgrimorn when he came back to Skyrim after the Snow Elves made poor life choices. Good heavens, look at the time. They are a proud band of warriors and even with an even prouder history, and they just might be willing to let you in. You just gotta talk to Codlack. 
After chatting with them and beating Vilkas over the head, they allow you in as an honor, as a member, or at least as a temporary member. First, you have to go on a, a trial run, but y you can do that relatively quickly. Now, once you join, you're a member of the Companions, and you can now take Companion quests, meaning you can act as a mercenary, which means you get to be, you'll be sent to kill bandits, exterminate wild animals that are causing problems. But anyway, you're saving people, you're helping people out, that kind of stuff. And you know, it's good, honest bloodshedding. My kind of gig. Only one problem. The pay. And there's no money in here. <laughs> 300 gold? Are you serious? I'm charging down a bandit camp for a few measly septums? That's it. Back to crime. All right. In all seriousness, the pay could be better, but I really do enjoy the missions. And it's nice to be paid to do be the good guy. Not to mention you you can still make a little money by literally looting everything. I know you're all loot goblins, don't you lie to me. But anyway, everyone in Skyrim will also respect you for being a companion. Surprising, since you're a Shatter of Blood, but remember, that, that's the, what the Nords love to do. They love honorable warriors, and the companions are the most honorable of warriors. So they respect the companions, and by proxy, they will respect you for joining. And I'm not gonna lie, the companion quest line I think is really cool. I do wish it was longer, but I could say that for most of the quest lines in Skyrim. I think it's well, I think it's more well developed than some of the others. Now, could it be a little bit more well developed? We'll talk about that in a bit, but it's not bad. And so let's talk about it. For you see, this whole guild is really kind of near and dear to my heart. So you see, with most guilds in Skyrim, I couldn't give a crap about 90% of the members, but with the companions, I actually like the majority of them. There is potential to be had, but as I've been getting on, it just needs a bit more time in the old oven. That being said, here's what I, we have to work with. After working for the companions for a solid nanosecond, Skewer takes a liking to you and wants to induct you into the circle, which is the leadership of the companions. However, there is a twist. The circle is all werewolves. <laughs> So if you want to join, you have to become a werewolf. After one massacre later, Ayala takes you to go kill some werewolf hunters called the Silverbloods. I would like to take a moment to appreciate the fact that the werewolf hunters here are the bad guys. You go on to depopulate a base only to find Skewer has gone to join her scene in that great big hunting ground in the sky. Ayella, mad that the Silverbloods dare defend themselves, they don't have human rights, relax. They d you could both decide to plan a little revenge spree, which you get to take part in. After reminding the Silverbloods who run Skyrim, Codlack steps in, points out that you've done more than enough revenge killing and that he wants you to cure his lycanthropy. He figures out that if you kill the witches who gave the werewolf curse to the companions hundreds of years ago, then you can cut their heads off and use them to cure them by throwing them in a fire. No, I don't understand how it works. So anyway, you go off to decapitate some witches. Again, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to slay witches, and my lawyer has advised me not to finish this joke. Anyway, only to find out that the Silverbloods attacked, stole the fragments of Ruthrad, Portnax, we'll talk more about it later, and killed Codlack. Now here's the thing. Much like Parthenax, I like Codlack. And I was exterminating the Silverbloods for fun previously, but now it's personal. So me and Vilkus go off and finish off the Silverbloods and get the fragments of Wuthrad back. It's, it's his remorse axe. Anyway, after one funeral scene later, Yorlin gives you a reforged Wuthrad so you can go unlock Iskrimor's tomb to cure Codlack. Again, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why we couldn't consult the College of Winterhold to figure this nonsense out. I mean, there's some guy in... Uh, and Marthal that knows how to cure vampirism if you just throw him a black soul gem, so I, I don't know why we had to go through all that extra steps. I, I feel like this is uh, a little superfluous and a little nonsensical, but it's cool. Just, just run with it, won't you? So we go there, we go inside, fight some of the old companions who want to try and test your metal by, you know, trying to kill you. There, Codlack is at the very end of the cavern, and he names you as the next leader of, com of the companions as you cure him. And he goes off to Sovngarde. You'll actually see him later when you go there. So, with that being said, how do we fix the companions? Honestly, I really do like them as they are. 
I do think they could use a little bit more character development because the members of the circle get a lot, get a decent amount of development, particularly people like Aella and Vilkas. You kind of under, they kind of seem a little bit more fleshed out than the other. But there are some lower members of the companions. Most of you probably don't even remember their names. But I think there really is some potential there. And I think if they had been given a little bit more time to cook in the oven, they would really just be the best faction in Sky. And oh, and one more thing. And on my pay dynamic, I got student loans for Winterhold. Anyway, now we are going to move on to the next one. So we have a bit of a problem here. You are still in deep in debt because of your student loans at Winterhold, as we've already established. And the companion's pay just isn't cutting it. As much fun as it is, that day job is not going to be able to solve your problems. But perhaps you're willing to do some things that are a bit unorthodox to pay off your debt? Fret not, for we have options for you. May, might I introduce the Dark Brotherhood? Ah, the Assassin's Guild. So this is an interesting one. The Dark Brotherhood is a guild of assassins in service to Sithis, the god of the void. They are a staple of Elder Scrolls as they appear in multiple games. But in Skyrim, things aren't going too well, as the last active Dark Brotherhood cell is in Skyrim. The previous cells were destroyed or abandoned, and they have been operating without a listener for years. So, okay, let me explain the listener real quick for those of you that don't understand. You don't just go up to the Dark Brother and go, oh, excuse me, I'd like to uh, request one un unalivement, please. No. There's a ritual to this. There's a process. You can't just ask a man to kill another man for gold unless that man's a companion. But it's it's morally okay when they do it. Shut up. Now, anyway, so here's how you recruit the Dark Brotherhood to do you a, a favor. You have to partic uh, participate in a ritual where you basically sacrifice to the Night Mother. It's you know, sweet. You, you, you get a skeleton, you throw a heart in the middle, some other weird ingredients, and you stab the heart over and over again, gang, sweet mother, sweet mother, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I need a guy dead. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the main idea. Regardless, when you do that, it sends a magical message to the Night Mother, a corpse, and she tells the listener, hey, by the way, we got a contract, go out there, collect the stuff, do what you need to do, and then go, and then collect money. Simple as can be. But here's the issue. We haven't had a listener in a little while. So most of the Dark Brotherhood has been kind of lost what to do. Well, surprisingly, the cell in Skyrim has actually still been functioning just fine without a listener. So what do they do? Basically, they keep their ear to the ground and Astrid's uh, squad will find out that someone has been doing something creepy like reciting Sweet Mother, Sweet Mother as they stab a heart over and over again in their, in their parents' basement. Apparently that news tends to get out. So once they figure that out, they approach them, say they've been, they've been heard, what do you want us to do? And that has been working for a little bit. But this hasn't stopped the Brotherhood, as they just try and keep their ear to the ground for whoever's performing the ritual and they go and seek them out. And that's where you come in. After you kill an old lady running an orphanage, she deserved it, I promise, you will be abducted by the Dark Brotherhood, specifically Astrid, the leader of the Brotherhood at the time. Because the Grelod the Kind, the lady you just killed, belonged to the Dark Brotherhood, like she was their target. Here you have a choice. You can kill the hostages Astrid has brought before you in effect and join the Dark Brotherhood, or you can kill Astrid, free the hostages, and kill off the Brotherhood. And if you're doing a lawful good run, you can do that, or you can enjoy killing people for money and become an assassin. So when you join the Dark Brotherhood, you meet the crazy little family, and to its credit, each member does have a little bit of a personality. So your family has a bit of character to it to enjoy. Not a great deal, but remember, by Skyrim standards, that we're doing pretty good here. First thing you have to do, though, is you have to do some grunt missions. Then you get access to a major mission. So first, you talk to you, you talk to the Brotherhood. They send you to run out and do some random killings here and there. Nothing too crazy, nothing too complex. Then finally, Astrid gives you a major mission. After that major mission, you find out that the newest member of the Dark Brotherhood, or rather a returning member of the Dark Brotherhood, has rolled in, Cicero. Now, Cicero is one of the surviving members from the Cyrodiil Holds, who is now taking care of the Night Mother's corpse with, oh. Ripped, but, oh, wagon wheel, damnedest wagon wheel. It oh, no, I'm not dealing with that voice again. Hold on one second. 
and done. Astrid has heard him babble and assumes that he's planning a coup, but you of you go and spy on him by hiding in the Night Mother's coffin to find out he's not really planning anything, he's just crazy. But then the Night Mother wakes up and talks to you and says, hey, we're back in business. Cicero finds out and is overjoyed when you confirm you are in fact the new listener. Astrid, however, is upset because, well, this is a return to tradition, which is a challenge to her power. She lets you go on the Night Mother's mission to kill the Emperor. So you and the family get to work. First, you kill the Emperor's cousin on her own wedding day, so the Emperor has to come and visit. Then you can kill his guard captain's son. Once you kill him, you'll plant evidence on him to implicate him in a plot to kill the Emperor to sort of crush the guard captain Morrow's... Uh, whole soul, if you will. Then, before you move on to the next operation, Cicero has gone crazy! Audible gasp! Oh wait, that's normal, he's always crazy. Oh no, he's homicidally crazy! Audible gasp! Oh wait, no, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's still normal. He started attacking members of the Brotherhood! Okay, now that's unusual, that we need to crack down on. I will have to wonder though, is this about the mod, Cicero? And oh, it's Astrid talking shit. Whew, thought it was my fault for a second. Anyway, Astrid was, uh, what, what did you say that offended them so much? What, you were talking about shit uh, about not only the Night Mother, but me too? The hell, Astrid? I thought we were friends. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? So anyway, you run off to Dawnstar Sanctuary to go and kill him. Yes, kill him. He sure is dead! Anyway, with that sorted out, then you go off and kill and impersonate the best chef in Tamriel. And you get closer to the Emperor. And then you kill him with your stew or however, and then you bounce. Only to find out that you accidentally just killed a body double. And Astrid actually sets you up, hoping that you would die and that C Guard Captain Morrow would do the honor and leave the Dark Brotherhood alone after, you know, we had already killed his son and ruined his reputation. Astrid, what the hell were you thinking? Anyway, you go back to base and find it's on fire thanks to the Imperial agents. You recover the last two members of the Dark Brotherhood, and you find Astrid begging for death, which, happy to give. I'm now in charge, and we got a contract to finish. After killing Morrow, you board the Emperor's ship and go find the Emperor who is chilling and just ready to be killed. He doesn't even have a problem with it. The only request that he has is that you just kill the treacherous little weasel who hired you. You know what? Deal. Anyway, with that out of the way, you can renovate the base at Dawnstore and become a proper Assassin's Guild again. Let's talk about this. What do we need to fix about the Dark Brotherhood? Because, I'm going to be real, the story's great. I don't think you need to change much about it. Maybe, you know, add some more development to some of the characters, but a lot of them die anyway, so what are you going to do? Add a bit more character development, but like I said, that goes for everyone in Skyrim. The missions are fun, the pay is decent, and the storyline is amazing, and if you don't like it, you can kill them. I wish that was an option for more of a guild. What if I want to be super good and kill off another bad guild? What if I want to be super evil and kill off another good guild? The options. I love choice. I love it. I do wish the rewards were for killing off the Dark Brotherhood were better, but at least there is an option. I think out of all of the guilds, I think the Dark Brotherhood, I think, needs the least amount of change. I think they've done a very good job here. But let's say let's say you're not comfortable living the life of an assassin let's say you're not you want to be a good guy again but you're not big into lycanthropy well don't worry we have a specialist job for you for the dawn guard is recruiting and i'm sure they've told you ah yes the dawn guard these are the vampire hunters. Now imagine some of you were probably expecting me to do a full-on video on these guys like I did with the Volcar clan, but the majority of the story missions are identical to the Volcar counterpart, though still we'll run through the basics. At some point, either you get attacked by vampires alerting you to the problem, or the Dawn Guard recruiting agents find you and say, hey, by the way, you should come up and talk to Isran. You should end the vampire menace, that sort of nonsense. So eventually you will find yourself running off to Fort Dawn Card to join Isran and his Dawn Guard. These guys, as previously mentioned, are vampire hunters who broke off from the vigilance of Stendar, presumably because they were worthless and weak and those were their good points. Hey, do you guys do work with the Bards College by chance? Anyway, okay, that's unfair. The vigilance of 
some Stendar might suck, but they're not the Bard's College. That, that was beneath me. Anyway, now to the interview process. No need. Isran's just like, like, all right, you want to kill vampires? Uh, yeah, here's a crossbow. Go crazy. I have a crypt I need you to destroy. Right to the meat of it. I love it. So anyway, we go off, we raid the crypt, we kill off the vampires, and we find Serana. And that's when things get complicated. So anyway, it's at this point you can take the choice. You can either drop Serana off and then bounce back to the Dawn Guard to let them know we have a huge problem, or you can join the Volcar Clan as I discussed in my Volcar Clan video. So really, do you want to be a vampire hunter or do you want to be a vampire lord? Well, I will admit the vampire lord is fun, but it's really perfected if you had mods. I would argue that the Dawn Guard is better for the vanilla run through or as closer to vanilla, I should say. Also, the Dawn Guard has better drip, and I will die on that hill. You get access to fancier crossbows, crossbow bolts, <laughs> you know, bolts that can explode. You can hire armored trolls, and the best boy in the game, who you good boy. Plus, with the exception of Israel, all the Dawn Guard is nice and willing to help out. They're pretty chill and easygoing. But if you were planning on becoming a vampire, I'm guessing making friends and hiring your to-do list, and you're still gonna choose the Volcar clan. Which, fair enough, just promise me you'll run it better than the last idiot. Moving on though, we are here to talk about the Dawn Guard. So what do you do with them? Well, there's numerous missions to, uh, to kill vampires, and that's pretty much it. It's very much a similar line of work with the companions, just vampire focused. So if you like the companions, you're probably gonna like the Dawn Guard. They aren't bad, but they don't really distinguish themselves against a faction, say, like the companions. Like I said, they are very similar. I mean, let's be real here, guys. Is there any real mission the Dawn Guard undertake that the companions couldn't deal with? He does exactly what I do, but better. It also doesn't help that the vampire hunting can get you into trouble with the law as you'll be asked to kill vampires discreetly so the guards don't get upset. So what do we do to fix this? Instead of just creating a hit squad to knock out the vampire's menace like Isran wants, let's start training up Dawn Guard reps to go to each hold and have the rank and file guards trained on how to identify vampires and how to combat them effectively. Because one of the biggest advantages of vampires is they will live right under your nose. If the rank and file is trained on how to combat them, you won't need to have as large a Dawn Guard presence. This way, the Dawn Guard doesn't run into the issue with the Yarl, and the Dawn Guard can focus on controlling the wilds to clear them of the vampire layers there while getting local support and backup from the rank and file who know what the heck they're doing. So, real simple fix. All I, all I say you need to do, and uh, again, if you are going to go the Vampire Lord route, download some mods, spice it up a little bit. Being a vampire should be an intimidating and fun experience for everybody. Being a vampire hunter should also be fun as well. Moving on. So, you might think that's fun, you might think all is well, but there's one problem. Despite working for the Dark Brotherhood, the Companions, the Dawn Guard, you're still broke. Sorry, dude. Them college loans are still hitting me hard. What are we gonna do? The secret ingredient is crime. Let's talk about the best money-making operation in Skyrim, the Thieves' Guild. So, last but not least, the Thieves' Guild. Another return to the Elder Scrolls. You'll never guess what these guys are about. That's right, stealing. So why join the Thieves' Guild? Well, it's the most effective way of making money in the game, as I stated earlier. Yes, companions work. <laughs> yes, companion work in assassin contracts pale in comparison to the amount of septums you can pull in with these guys. So if you're wondering how I afford my magical education, the answer is, of course, crime. And a lot of the jobs they ask you to do are pants poopingly easy. You have two sets of quests in terms of radiance. One is with Vex doing breaking and entering style jobs. You go in, you steal something, so on and so forth. You get paid for it. Second is you work with Delvin and do the more up-close personal jobs, like the Bedlam jobs or the Numbers jobs, where you just like rewrite ledgers. That's right, play Skyrim. We have white-collar crime now. Still, the money from these guys do add up relatively quickly. Not to mention that the guild can act as a fence so you can sell stolen goods. And no, I don't know how every shopkeeper in Tamriel has a sixth sense to know if something is stolen or not. I see everything. But anyway, you might be wondering why I bring up these Radiant quests so much, because not only do they give you money, they actually help advance the storyline, or at least a part of it. You see, when you join the Thieves' Guild, they are in a rough spot. Much like the Dark Brotherhood, the Guild has been doing poorly for a while, and you doing jobs will help the Guild regain its standing and its reputation, along with getting you rewards. 
Specifically, once you complete five jobs in one of the major cities other than Riften, a special mission will activate that for that city that helps you reestablish the guild's presence there and unlocks a new fence for you to work with. Also the reason why 95% of the jobs they give you will be in Riften because the game hates you making progress. Beyond that though, the main story is pretty good. You're sent out to find out who has been actively screwing over the guild. You eventually find out it's Carlia, a former big shot in the guild who was betrayed by Mercer, the current guild leader, who then eventually goes out to kill Carlia with you, but betrays you in the process. You then link back up with the Thieves Guild with Carlia, who explains everything, and find out that Mer Mercer stole everything from the guild. What? A thief who steals? Who would have seen this coming? What a twist! Anyway, Carlac takes you and Brenny off to, to talk to Nocturnal, the Daedric Prince of Yoinking stuff, and it's revealed that the reason why the Thieves Guild is doing poorly is because Mercer stole the Skeleton Key. For those of you that don't know, the Skeleton Key is a lockpick. That never breaks. Seriously though, we need to hunt down Mercer in our new drip and kill him and take the key back to the Twilight Sepulcher. In return, we get one out of three nightmare powers. One's for invisibility once per day, one's a damaging blast that heals you, and one's a spell that causes nearby enemies to fight each other. Is that really worth giving up the skeleton key? No! No! Yeah, I'm just gonna hold on to it for a little bit longer. I totally promise I'll give it back. Now, anyway, how does the Thieves Guild hold up overall? They're okay. I'd say they're pretty good. The story is engaging to say the least. You get to steal so much stuff, and if you want to be a thief or a rogue kind of character, this guild is of course perfect to you. The only real problem I can think of is with the exception of Carlyle and Brynjolf, the rest of the guild really doesn't do that much. I hesitate to even call a lot of the members even one note. I mean, listen, I know that it's a big problem with several of the guilds in Skyrim that they are uh, have underdeveloped characters or sort of one-note characters, but the Thieves' Guild has the blandest, most forgettable members. I mean, let's be real, when you're going into the Ratway Cistern, does anyone really matter? Sure, you can go up and talk to them and they'll congratulate you on what you're doing, but do they really even do anything? They exist. At least the Dark Brotherhood guys would occasionally pop in on a story quest to help you out with. But if, unless it's Vex, Delvin, or uh, Brynjolf, you're not getting anything out of the rat way. So, let's move on. How do we fix the guild with the little problems we have? So, of course, character development, but let's talk mechanics. Let me choose where I do my job so I can unlock the cool missions earlier on. Please and thank you. There is literally nothing left in, me, in Riften for me to steal. I'd also like it if I could use uh, the guild to help me punish anyone who got butthurt enough to send mercenaries after me for stealing. Seriously, I only have so many soul gems I can fit them into. I'd also like the option to kill all of them. Call the police. Like, here, here's the thing. If I'm doing a lawful good run, I really don't want to be an assassin or a thief. But at least with the Dark Brotherhood, I have the option of being able to eradicate them. So I could play, completely do like a very lawful or chaotic good run through. But with the Thieves Guild, they're, even though they're technically in a downturn, there is no effective way to get rid of them. Wouldn't it be fun if there was a way to not only take out the Thieves Guild, and, but also take down Maven Blackbriar at the same time? Oh, that would be delicious. But... Regrettably, there is. I think there are some mods or something that let you m mess with uh, Maven, but still. Vanilla game, it would be nice to have that as an option, too. But the one thing I will give the Thieves Guild, you do make me a lot of money. And because of that, I've paid off my college tuitions. So, after that, you're looking sharp, Dragonborn. You are the master of the blades, the archmage of Winterhold, the harbinger of the companions, the listener of the Dark Brotherhood, and master of the Thieves Guild. Oh, and an associate member at the Dawn Guard. Oh, my heavens, isn't that great? So, you are a very talented individual. Tamriel quakes in your step. Under my tutelage, you shall become the greatest threat or hero Tamriel has ever seen. Well, thank you for listening, and I hope you found a guild that you can get attached to. And Bethesda, if you're listening, I hope you take some of my changes to heart. Seriously, Delphine, what the hell? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for this taking so long. Hopefully the next one I'll actually get my acting gear, but I've been distracted by not only things at work, but also my own incompetence. So until then, I will see you all in the next one. Take care.